What's up? What's up, Facebook fam? This is your girl, Gail Crowder, and it is Wife Chat Tuesday. Yes, it is that time. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And as you guys know, every single Tuesday, as long as the Lord will permit, I will be doing Wife Chat Tuesday, and I'm super excited. So go tell your, your girlfriends that um, we're doing Wife Chat Tuesday. Hello. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for joining me. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Teresa, for joining me. Thank you, guys. Hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Go tell your girlfriends Wife Chat Tuesday is happening here on Facebook. Go share it. Go share it. Go share it. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Tonight, we're going to talk about um, showing your spouse a little kindness. And, and sometimes I know that's hard. So um, again, thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, you guys know, um, send me your topics that you want me to talk about on Wife Chat Tuesdays, and I will do my best to make it happen. I, I am so grateful for all of you guys who have been joining that you've been sending me in my inbox here on Facebook saying, Gail, I want to talk about this. Gail, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. So, you know, um, please, please, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I appreciate you. Please go um, share that we're on doing um, Wife Chat Tuesday. And tonight we're going to just talk about, you know, showing our husbands a little kindness. And and I, I think sometimes that's underrated, especially when he has worked your last nerve. And so I'm just going to talk about, um, you know, my journey to kindness to Gil. <laughs> And then you guys can chime in. I'm not on here by myself. I'm on here with all of you guys. So again, thank you so much for joining me. And, and um, uh, I pray that you guys um, continue to hop on. Again, I'm so open to different topics. Um, and it, for you guys who know me, know that I'm an open book. So I would discuss pretty much anything. Um, like I said, I don't have no skeletons in my closet about my marriage. July the 20th, whoop, whoop, I will be married 30 years, literally half of my life. And I thank God for it uh, because we should have been the statistic in year two. And so, um, and so I, I'm grateful to be able to impart into you guys just some wisdom um, that, that, that God is leading me to impart into you guys. And again, I thank you so much for you guys who are, um, sending me topics that you want me to cover. And, and again, I'm not afraid to tackle them because again, I, I want us to win in our marriages. I want us to win in every area of our lives. And I know that God has called me to this, this place of marriage and, uh, teaching us how to be sexy and teaching us how to be all of those things, right? Uh, but some of the things we, you know, it's not easy. And like I said, my mouth is can be a lethal weapon. And I, we've talked about this on Wife Chat, or it can, I can use it to build my husband up. And so I'm on this journey. Hey, Lisa, how are you guys? Thank you so much for joining me uh, to really uh, get us in a space where we could communicate more effectively. Not perfect, because none of us are perfect, but communicate more effectively and really show um, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, make sure that you're, you're sharing this, that wife, you know, wife chat Tuesdays is happening. Um, and so I really want to just get into, you know, showing our husbands a little kindness. And, um, I will tell you, um, I do, uh, and I, and I, like I said, if you want to go back and watch some of the videos, the videos are going up on my YouTube channel. If you just go on Gail Crowder, they'll be going up on, you know, up on my YouTube channel. Um, because, uh, a lot of women want to go back and watch them or you can go scroll through my timeline here on Facebook and see all the wife chats, um, that I've done. But, um, uh, as you guys know, I talked about on a wife message class doing a, a marriage checkup and, uh, that started um, for me about six years ago now, a little bit longer, where I actually sit down and I do a, a, a marriage checkup, like I um, get a wellness checkup. And now I, you know, I get a wellness checkup twice a year. And so I, I do a marriage checkup twice a year. And one of the marriage checkups, um, probably around two years ago, which is fairly recent with the way my life goes. Um, you know, I was talking to Gil and I asked him, what can I do better? Right. That's my, one of my questions. What can I do better? And he's like, gee, you could not be so mean. And I was like, mean, it's like, yeah, you, you, you just, 
you're mean, you say mean things out of your mouth. Um, you, you know, sometimes when you're having a bad day, you just take it out on everybody in the household and those kind of things. And I was like, hmm, you know, sometimes, you know, I can accept things better than, you know, other things. But that was one of the things I had to really go into prayer about and ask God, am I really mean? And some days I have to take credit. I am. And so I went on this journey of really searching on how I can be more kind to my husband and how I can not be so mean and take out everything that I'm feeling and all my frustrations um, on, on him and my children, right? And so, like I said, sometimes you have to receive it and sometimes you like, I'm not taking that on and, you know, that's your issue. But I had to realize that, you know, some days I'm just not having a good day and I can be mean. And I, I want to create a household, especially now that my children are getting older, where when Gil and I are alone, that we want to be alone and we want to be happy alone. And we're not just living in a house being miserable, right? Just to say we're married because I, I have been in that point too, where we just was married by name, but we didn't have anything else going on. And, and so um, I, I want to, like I said, show your, your husband a little kindness. And so when I um, went to God and I asked him, I said, Lord, am I, am I mean and nasty? And, you know, I had to sit with that for a few. He took me to Ephesians 4 and 22, and it says, throw off the old sinful nature and your former ways of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and your attitude. And so I had to sit with that and I had to say, God, really, what are you saying to me? And he's basically telling me in order for me to show my spouse a little kindness, I had to renew my mind. I had to renew my thoughts towards Gil, all the hurt, all the you know, financial situations, all the things that was making me not be happy and make me have an attitude towards him, I had to throw those off. I had to put those in 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 God's hands and renew my thought process, renew the way I seen Gil, renew the way I related to Gil, renew all the things that was making me be mean and nasty, I had to renew those th those things. And if you're in a situation, it didn't say forget. It said renew, replace, replace all of the negative things that led you there. Because for some reason, I was still with him, right? Because if he had done so much bad things, why was I still with him? So, you know, God took me to that scripture to let me know if I renew my mind and I fill it with positive things towards my husband, I wouldn't be so mean and nasty, right? Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. So I had to renew and restore my mind towards my husband. And when I begin to renew and restore and all the negative things that he did, I began to replace them with positive things, right? Every time I wanted to go negative, I had to replace with positive things. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. Do I have a bad day? Absolutely. So don't think I didn't got this stuff down to a science. But what I'm saying is every time that you get ready to be rude and, and nasty to your spouse, think about showing them a little love and kindness. Think, think about do you want what you're about to say to your spouse or what you're about to do to your spouse done to you? And when you really start renewing your mind, you would you'll begin to say, no, I don't want that said to me. I don't want that done to me. So I, I want my mind to be renewed and restored. And so as, as I as I go through this, just think about ways that you can begin to restore the, the negative things, because everybody on this planet that's married has went through something rough. Your husband has said something to you, has done something to you that you are like, uh, -uh I'm going to be mad for the rest of, you know, whatever. But you can't, how, how do you, how, you know that that expends so much energy trying to be negative. I used to be able not to talk to Gil for a month and live in the same household with him and sleep in the same bed and not say, but that took energy. I, I was good at it. it. That took energy. It took energy to know that if he get ready to say something to me, that I'm not going to say nothing back, right? It wasn't just natural. That's not natural behavior. So it took a lot out of me. 
but I learned the art of being mean and nasty. And so I thought I had got past that. But when I did my marriage checkup like two years ago, you know, I guess some of that remnant was still there. So I had to really work through that. I had to really grow through that. And I had to ask God to really renew and restore my mind towards my husband. So if you're in that space, if you're in that place, it can happen for you. It's going to take work. It's not going to happen overnight. And, and if you're in a situation where you, you continuously getting hurt in, in, in your marriage and you're like, Gail, yeah, every time I'm trying to be kind, he does something to send, send me over the edge, then you guys need to get some type of counseling, some type of intervention. Because again, I... I I, I believe that 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 you know coaching, counseling, or whatever is not a bad thing. It could give you some tools and strategies to really help you navigate some of the things that are going on. Because really, hurt people hurt people, right? And I was a hurting woman. I was an unhappy woman. So I carried those through my relationships, not just with my husband, with my children, with my girlfriends, all you know, with my coworkers, all of those different things. So. Really just think about renewing your mind and asking yourself every time I have to, every time I want to do something negative or say something negative towards my spouse, would I want this reciprocated back to me? And I will tell you 99% of the time, your answer is going to be no. Will you, your flesh rise up and you do it anyway? Absolutely. Because you're human. Can you apologize? Yes, you can. But once you say words, they stick. You can't ever take them back. You can apologize for them, but they, again, it's, it's just, you're going to always have to be, you know, apologizing and renewing your mind. So I'm always apologizing. I'm always re uh, renewing my mind. Some days I'm like, he deserved it. And that's what he gets. And hey, you know, we move on for for it. But as far as really checking my attitude on a regular basis, I try to do that, and I pray that you're trying to do the same thing. So let me just give you some tools and, and, and strategies that led me towards being more kind towards Gil because it has it's still a process, it's still a journey. You know, we still have arguments, we still you know hurt one another or whatever. But my my goal in 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 my marriage now is that I'm going to try to out love, out appreciate and outdo Gil to the day that I die because I don't have a plan B. Thank you so much for joining me. I don't have a plan B for my marriage. So I want this marriage to be the best marriage that it can be. You know, I have my, I have a son that's out of the house. I got one that's ticking outside of the house next year. And then, you know, God has blessed me with two amazing little girls that you're going to be in our house for, for a while. Right. But again, I still want Gil and I's relationship because I had to do some shifting of my mind when they came to live with us that, you know, we were going to be empty nesters, but I still have to work on making sure when they get ready to leave this house, that Gil and I are solid, that we love each other. We're able to communicate, communicate effectively, not be perfect because we're not perfect people, but be able to, to, to do the things that we aspire to do. And it's not a chore. And, and we really like being around each other. You've seen couples where you're like, oh my God, I just wish we could be them. I want to be that couple. And yes, sometimes people are faking it till they make it, but I want my whole home to be an authentic place where we really enjoy and really love each other and truly love being around each other. Thank you guys so much for joining us, right? And so when you're looking at being kind to your spouse, always try to think before you speak, right? Always try to think before you speak, because again, your words have power. They can either build or they can be, they can tear them down and trust and believe me, the world that we live in, our men are being torn down left and right every way that they turn in the media, at work, they're getting skipped over for promotions, all of these things. So your household needs to be a safe place where you take the time to, to tell them how much you love them, how much you appreciate them and build them up. Even if you're not getting the back, 
Because I believe that you can sow for every single thing that you want. I believe that. I am a living witness. I sow for every single thing that I want. So if I want kindness, I got to sow kindness. If I want love, I got to sow love. If I want uh, help, I got to be helpful. If I want support, I got to be supportive, right? I sow for every single thing that I do. And I made a post on Saturday because I was at this women empowerment thing when my life is totally busy, but I was at this women empowerment thing supporting one of my really, really good friends. And I know that it's going to be reciprocated when I need her to come support me in, in, in one of my events. Right. And so I sow for those things. And so for me, I'm, I decided once Gil told me in my marriage checkup, if you're not doing a marriage checkup, watch that video that says marriage checkup on Wife Masterclass. And I will tell you, we'll give you some amazing, amazing nuggets to help you really understand where you are in your marriage. Because a lot of times we don't ask the hard questions. We don't ask the right questions. We get ourselves in, in, in crisis and then we want a 911 call when we can really avoid some of the things that go, are going on in our marriage. And then, like I said, when Gil said, Gail, you, you just mean sometimes. I had, to, I had to sit with that and I had to ask God, do I take that on? And, and the answer was yes. And so I wanted to navigate from that. And so let me just give you some tips on um, things that you can do to be kind to your spouse. The first thing is, see, uh, what the first thing I decided to do, and this is something that you can do, and hopefully you'll write this down. I seen the needs that he had, and I tried to be a resource for those needs. I seen the needs that my husband needed, and I tried to be the resource to help him get those things done. So what do I mean by that? You know, my husband is uh, commutes like a whole lot. His out his his commute is almost two hours to work and two hours back, right? Um, because he catches the train all the way from DC, from where we live, right? And so the thing is, is when he gets home, he only has a limited amount of time. And when you used to walk through the door, I used to bombard him with a thousand different things that was going on in my business, what I needed or whatever. And what I realized is that he needed some peace and quiet before I bombarded him with all of my stuff. So I asked him, what is a great time for us to be able to talk? Because I want you to be able to hear me, but I want you to be in a space where you're not, you know, coming off your commute and being bombarded by all of my stuff. So that was one of the things that 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 I, I realized that he needed peace and quiet. Because that was a need that he had. And I wanted to be able to facilitate that, not just with me, but with the children. So I made sure the dinner was already cooked. I made sure everybody was in place, right? So he could have that sanctuary time where my house was not chaotic when he walked through the door. But that was a need that was in my household. What is the need in yours? The second thing is I, I, I speak words that ease his burdens and impart peace into his life. Now I can be chaotic all by myself. I can create a lot of burdens. I can, I can, you know, create a lot of havoc. But again, I want my household, especially my bedroom, to be a sanctuary. I want my husband to know that when he walks through his bedroom, at least, there's peace. So I try not to argue with my husband in my bedroom because I want to have amazing sex in my bedroom. Yes and amen, I said it. So I'm not going to try to have love, peace, and harmony and fuss in the same room. I, I just don't do it. I will close the, the bathroom. We can have it out in the bathroom. We can go to the basement. We can go somewhere where, the, you know what I mean? But I, we, we, we don't have intense fellowship in my bedroom because I want this to be a sanctuary. Now, before, before I used to act as plum food, wherever I was, but I realized my bedroom needs to be a sanctuary, a sanctuary of peace, love, kindness, relaxation, 
not chaotic, not full of junk, not a whole bunch of stuff. So if your bedroom is not a sanctuary, you need to create a place where you and your husband can have peace. If you're cutting up and acting a fool in your bedroom and then you want to turn around and make love, I, I don't, it doesn't work for me, but it might work for you. But try to create a, a separate place to have intense fellowship. Allow your bedroom to be a place of peace. I hope I'm making sense. Y'all real quiet. Replace self-focus to service focus. And what do I mean by that? It, you can get caught up in so much of me, 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 me. What about we, 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 right? And I'm not saying that, that marriage should be a one-sided thing, that you need to be a doormat and that you shouldn't have no opinions and the only thing you need to do is serve your husband and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, again, when you begin to sow for what you want, I'm telling you, will reap. Gail, you don't know my husband. You ain't married to him. He don't do this. He don't do this or whatever. The more you say he's not, the more he's not. The more you ask God to transform him into the man that he's supposed to be, I guarantee you he will begin to work. But you have to realize the more you put him down, the more you put yourself down because you became one. And so I really, really want you to focus in on sowing what you want. And some days it's really hard. And I used to have to write cards. Gail, you love Gil no matter what. Gail, you don't have plan B, plan C, or plan D. Gail, you are married to a wealthy man when we only had $2. Gail, he manages the money. Like I had to write myself cue cards. I did. But I will tell you, when I began to quit saying, we always broke, you get on my nerves, you doing this, whatever. When I quit complaining and start shifting the what I was saying out of my mouth, my whole entire household shifted. Because we have power in the words that we speak out of our mouths. We do. So before I get ready to end this wife chat, I just want to tell you, ladies, I want to encourage you that no, my marriage is not perfect. But I will tell you on this 30 year journey, I have learned some things and I understand what it is to be in a, a horrible relationship. And I understand what it is to be in an amazing relationship with the same exact man, the same exact one. I ain't had no other ones, the same exact one. But I had to get myself in order and I had to realize what was important. And I had to use the same mouth that I'm using to, to impact the world, to impact my own, in, own household. Because I want peace. I want kindness. I want love. I want laughter. I want financial blessings. I want to be treated like the queen that I am. All of those things. So I sow for all of those things. So I'm asking you, to truly, truly use your words of kindness towards your spouse, even if he ain't acting out like it, even if he don't deserve it, try it. Develop an amazing prayer life. If you got to put sticky notes all over your mirrors to say something kind, do something kind for him, to, to, to you know, do the bare minimum until you can start what we're seeing and reaping what you have sown, just do it and do it on a consistent basis. And you will definitely, definitely see a shift in your household. Just know that I am praying every single morning at 4 a.m. for marriages all over the world. Every single, I don't care where I am in the world, I am praying that God shows up in your marriage like never before. And for you guys who really know me, you know that I do it on a regular basis. Every single day I'm up, no matter where I am in the world. And so I just want to encourage you to truly, truly show your, your spouse a little kindness. And why not start when you get off of here? Just go up and say, can I get you something cold to drink? Say, you know, I just wanted to tell you I love you today. 
Just tell them, is there anything that I can do for you to make your life a little bit easier right now? It's not that hard. It's really not that hard. If he said, no, I don't need nothing, want nothing, go again the next day. Put a put a card in his 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 you know in his card just saying what's thinking about you before you leave for work. And if you have a husband that ain't working, pray and ask God to give him a, his dream job. Because I've been there before too. Right? You can shift things with your mouth, but you can also use your mouth to either build or tear down. And I'm telling you, you're with that man for a reason. So you might as well make it the best reason there is, right? And so I just want to thank each and every last one of you guys. Yeah, this is this is a woman. Okay, thank you very much. Stephanie, powerful words we speak. Amen. Uh, definitely lift your husband up. So, 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 absolutely. Because I'm telling you, there is, that you will reap everything that you sow. And so um, as I get ready to get off of here, ladies, um, I will be starting um, Loving Him Without Losing You on July the 9th. So um, go on my webpage and check it out. I would love for you guys to join us. Join me because, again, you can lose yourself in these marriages, and I really want to guide you through that. Um, if you have any topics that you want me to um, cover in, um, uh, in, in wife chat, hit me up in the personal box or you can hit me here because I always go back and read all of you guys' comments and I will comment on there too because sometimes I can't catch it. Thank you so much, uh, Stephanie. I truly appreciate you. Um, and I appreciate each and every last one of you guys getting on here. I appreciate you spreading the word that every Tuesday I'll be on here talking about some topic. Um, and I thank each and every last one of you wives that send me topics because, again, I, I want to um, help you guys on your journey. And I, I don't know it all. So if you send me a topic, I will definitely tackle, tackle it. And if I don't tackle it the very next Tuesday, that's because I got another one. But I will always, always make sure that I tackle it. And I will acknowledge that I got your subject that you wanted me to talk about. Again, I love you guys to pieces. If you need me, you know how to get a hold of me, just gailcrowder.com. I have a free 30-minute consultation that I, I I'm blessed to be able to do anytime, you know, uh, you guys can book me on, on there. It's just, if you scroll down to the, the bottom of the page on my homepage and it says three, three 30 minute consultation, hit me up there. I would love to speak with you about anything. I'm not going to try to sell you nothing. Um, so again, you guys have a blessed night. Go back and watch all the, um, the classes that you can. And again, if you want a, a subject tackle, I'm your girl. I love you guys to pieces. Good night.